Visconti comes the modern state. Gian Galeazzo Visconti, late 1300s in particular. So uh, this is a good warning uh, from Putin. Extremist ideology is gaining momentum in the virtual sphere through which extremist organizations are trying to recruit followers and it must be prevented and combated. Um, and of course, it's ISIS. Libya is now a failed state. Syria has been ravaged and, and decimated. Egypt has uh, righted itself momentarily, and I hope permanently with General Sisi, because that's the, the tradition. Uh, Egypt needs a strong government. Nasser showed the way. You need new Nassers, and the U.S. will always be opposed to that, right? Ambassador Patterson was kicked out for supporting the Muslim Brotherhood. So that's uh, Putin. And then even more specific. Uh, within a day or two after that. Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister, accused the West of seeking regime change in Russia. This was the Saturday, uh, the 22nd of November. Lavrov accused the West of trying to use sanctions imposed on Moscow in the Ukraine crisis to seek regime change. Well, it's, it's clear. That's what they do in Iran. That's what they do in Russia. Quote, as for the concept behind the use of coercive measures... The West is making it clear it does not want to force Russia to change policy only, but wants to secure regime change. Um, quote, public figures in Western countries say there is a need to impose sanctions that will destroy the economy and cause public protests, a destabilization. So there's a one-two punch from Moscow against the destabilizers and the enemies of the modern state, uh, libertarians, the, the, the only thing one can fault is then what, if, if, you're, if you want, want to maintain your own modern state and you have every right, then don't foment uh, other forces in the West, the libertarian Paul, for example, that uh, pretend to represent some kind of uh, alternative. Uh, and we've, we're just noting then in passing that uh, little Rand Paul is now supporting an effort to pass a declaration of war for Syria and Iraq. One thinks it's going together with this coup attempt, right? Everybody in Washington knows that this putsch is going on, led by ISIS czar Allen, and that um, that's that's the movement. So everybody now seems to think if that's the train that's leaving the station, I got to jump on that train. Little Rand jumps on by offering to uh, whatever threadbare, tattered credibility he has, to say, I'll support a declaration of war provided there's a time limit. But it would be, it seems to me, a step towards bombing Assad. All right, so um, there we are. Um, Erdogan, Erdogan, uh, to see what kind of a despicable individual Erdogan is, Erdogan has now joined the Larry Summers School are inferior, says Erdogan. Women are inferior, and they should realize that the Islamic faith uh, relegates them to an inferior position. Well, I'm sorry, uh, that's not the way. Let me just point out that when Plato talked about philosopher kings in the Republic, he included philosopher queens, that women were seen as equal in their potential to um, carry out these affairs of, uh, of state. And we're also noting that in Eastern Europe, um, there's now a um, pro-Putin sphere emerging, right? Uh, Orban of Hungary and the uh, president of the Czech Republic these days. Both of them are uh, quite um, friendly to Putin, so much so that the Anglo-Americans are trying to stage destabilization rock in the Czech Republic uh, over this. Now, we also ought to catch up a little bit on the Iranian nuclear question. Uh, this is now adjourned for another seven months. Uh, we uh, are always of the opinion that jaw-jaw is better than war-war, as uh, that, um, that British uh, naval person uh, put it. Jaw-jaw is better than World War, at least in this case. With ISIS, not. But here it is, uh, totally different. And uh, we have to remember, Iran has the right to a full nuclear fuel cycle uh, and that sanctions economic warfare should be abandoned. They are harming Europe. Uh, if you embargo, if you sanction Russia and Iran and you're in Europe, you've already hurt your 
itself uh, mightily. Uh, I would uh, look at this list of the people who participated in these last talks, and I see the presence of Catherine Ashton, that ignominious dumb cow whose term is over. She's out. She's no longer the European Union policy boss. That is now Mogherini, and Mogherini is much more promising. I would say to Obama and even to Kerry, why not? If you, for your own political needs, which I think are quite acute, if you really are focused on a deal with Iran, get Ashton out of there. Out with Ashton, bring in Mogherini. She's going to be more reasonable, and uh, and play it that way. So um, Hegel, of course, was the first and only enlisted combat soldier to ever make it to the top of the Pentagon. That's got to uh, count for something. Uh, Susan Rice's battles. Susan Rice has fought many a battle, but uh, we can't describe them on a family-oriented uh, program like. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. This is our post-Thanksgiving program. We are recording, however, on Tuesday, the 25th of November. Now, we want to uh, get an update here on the situation with the, uh, the Pinckney persecution. I just want to mention um, one or two things about um, Whirlpool Corporation, who own this company town. Uh, if you know the trademarks Amana, Kenmore, Maytag, Bauknecht, KitchenAid, Crosley, Admiral, any of those, that's all Whirlpool. They are the biggest appliance manufacturer in the world, having passed Electrolux of Sweden. This is huge. $20 billion a year in sales, 70,000 workers, and all of this to uh, to persecute uh, a, a fighting spiritual leader like Reverend Pinckney who's trying to stop this community from being crushed and exploited. Welcome, Reverend Pinckney. Oh, thank you so much, Russell, for having me on. And I, I tell you, you said the right word. <laughs> the, uh, 70, 70,000 people that work at, at Whirlpool Corporation, more than 4,000 work here in the city of Benton Harbor, and less than a half a percent live in Benton Harbor. And all of the, you know, as, as if that weren't enough, right? The Upton family, uh, Fred Upton, we got Kate Upton. We'll, we'll hear more about her, I'm sure, in the coming days. Uh, and they've got to have a company town, and they want to crush all political opposition. And the political opposition is you. And therefore, the frame up, the railroad says on the 15th of December, you will be. But there is counter motion in the world. Please tell us about it. Absolutely. We are working fast right now to get some things done to file this motion inside the courtroom to stop the whole proceeding on December the 15th. It's going to be a little difficult because they got their mind made up that they're going to send me to jail for the rest of my life. And here's the thing. Uh, the sheriff, the sheriff of the county, Paul Bailey, was at a Republican meeting. Uh, I believe it was two weeks ago, two Saturdays ago, uh, and he told the crowd, they gave him 15 minutes to speak all about Reverend Pinckney. Uh, nobody ever gets 15 minutes at this stage. You get five, get 10 minutes, but they gave him 15 minutes to talk about the, the conviction. He told them that they had convicted Reverend Pinckney, and they gave him a standing ovation, a full house. Then they told, he told them that his plan is to send me to jail for the rest of my natural life. He said that they, everything is already processed. And they once again, they gave him another standing ovation. And he was just telling them that Reverend Pinckney, we got him, and we're not going to let him loose this time. So it goes on and on and on about the conviction itself. We know that they had no evidence. We know that I did nothing wrong. We know that they didn't have any witnesses. We know all these important things. But here in America, you don't need uh, evidence to send a Reverend Pinckney to jail. So this is a lynch mob, and the sheriff joins the lynch mob, and that is, uh, I think, a colorable basis under federal law that this was uh, to deprive you of your 
civil rights. Now, what exactly was the nature of this meeting and where was it? Do we know that? Is that like the county yes, Republican exactly Party? It was, it was in it was a, a Republican meeting. They usually have a monthly meeting uh, uh, once a month, and they had it at the school and where all the all members of the Republican Party normally come and they decide what they're going to do. Fred Upton usually be there. You have John Prose, the uh, the state senator. You have Albert Choker, the one who wrote the emergency manager bill. He he usually be there. And uh, you have the, the clerk, Sharon Tyler. She normally be there. And strictly Republicans. And uh, there was a couple of people from the Tea Party that was there. And it, and these people said that when they mentioned my name, when he got up there, he mentioned my name first. And when he said that he was he had convicted Reverend Pinckney, they gave him a standing ovation. They, I mean, they, they applauded, they applauded, and then finally he said that we're going to send him to jail for the rest of his life, and they gave him another standing ovation. It's one of those Republican meetings that nobody will believe, and I'm working on it. Just as you and I talked about, uh, uh, I will have the, the documents tomorrow, and I'm going to fax them to you. So you'll see exactly what I was talking about. Okay. And let me ask you, do we know if Congressman Upton, the state senator, and this guy, Chor were they, in fact, present? Do we know that? I'm positive that John Prose and Albert Choker was there. I'm not quite sure about uh, uh, Fred Upton. I'm not really so, positive. So I can't say he was there, but he's normally...